Okay, um, well thanks for the invitation to speak today. My name is Roger Ward, I'm a Solutions Architect with the uh, Australian Research Data Commons. And today I'm going to talk about unlocking the power of data using trusted research environments. Sorry, yeah. Okay, just an introduction. Who is the ARDC? Well, we're actually funded by the Australian Government. We're an ANCRIS facility. Um, so ANCRIS is the national research uh, infrastructure um, body in Australia. And we're one of a number of ANCRIS facilities. Um, so other ANCRIS facilities, National Imaging Facility, Australian Access Federation, PHRM. Um, uh, so there's a number of uh, ANCRIS facilities. And the idea behind these ANCRIS facilities is we do things at a national scale that uh, can't really be done at an individual state level uh, uh, basis. So that's the idea behind ANCRIS. And our mandate is um, we provide Australian researchers with the competitive edge through data. So we're all about giving access to data for researchers. Um, we're an infrastructure provider. We provide uh, Nectar, which is the Australian research cloud. Um, and that provides research computing to universities around Australia. We also provide services like uh, Health Data Australia. So if you've got a data set and you want to make it findable and accessible, you can put it in Health Data Australia and people can uh, request access to your data. We also do skills, um, so we do skills development and we write frameworks on trusted research environments. Okay, um, this is a gold uh, nugget that was found in 1980 in central Australia, uh, in um, central Victoria, 200 kilometers away from where I live in Melbourne. Um, someone with a metal detector found it. And what I'm saying here is the data that's held within these EMR systems is gold. It's golden. There is a rich vein of data ready to be used for research if we can do it properly, if we do it ethically and securely. The primary use of data that's collected by EMR systems is for clinical work. But if we can ethically and securely, securely uh, uh, manage that data, we can also use it for research. So it's, it's an enormous res, uh, resource that's sitting there ready to be exploited. So yes, the secondary use of uh, medical data. It's a golden opportunity, but it's also, it also comes with responsibility. It's incumbent on us to do this ethically and securely. And the answer, how do we do this, is, uh, in my opinion, and uh, I'm not alone, uh, trusted research environments. Uh, and what basically trusted research environments are, are secure, controlled digital spaces designed for in-depth analysis without compromising privacy. So TREs are non-negotiable. Uh, I've been working in this field for many years, um, and I've seen, you know, uh, sometimes informally people say, oh, yes, I'll, 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 let you, I'll share that data with you, I'll email you that data, I'll give you that data on a USB stick. Those days are well and truly gone. We've got to think about secu uh, data security. Um, we owe it to uh, the people we work with, the patients we care for. Um, uh, and also there's legislation now in place that we can no longer do those sort of things. So TREs are no longer uh, a luxury, they're non-negotiable. And for instance, uh, New South Wales uh, has mandated the use of TREs. If you want to use ge data generated in New South Wales Health, you've got to use a TRE to do it. Okay, so how do we establish trust? Okay, TREs to the rescue. So the definition of a TRE, it's a highly secure computing environment providing remote access to data for approved researchers. And the core principle here is 
you bring your na analysis to the data. You don't take the data out of the environment, you do your analysis on the data in the environment. So the data is always secure, uh, you go to the data. Um, it's anonymized data, it should be safe data, so you should take reasonable steps to de-identify the data. So you don't want people's names in there, you want to replace them with hashes or pseudo-anonymization. There should be an airlock system, so if you need to take data in and out of the system, it's moderated by an administrator who can check what's coming into the environment and what's leaving the environment. Um, you've got access to analytical tools, um, R, Python, Stata, SPSS, they're all there for you to do your work on. Um, the benefits of trusted research environments um, enhance security and compliance and also fosters trust with data custodians uh, and with the public that the data is being handled appropriately. Okay, so where, where, do, the, where, where do TREs come from and you know, how do we go about building one? Well, fortunately, there's quite a simple uh, framework called the five safes that guides us. Now, I really like the five safes framework. Um, I think it's quite flexible. It's not overly prescriptive, uh, and it's easy to follow. Uh, it was set up by a, um, a British economist called Felix Ritchie in 2003. And I'll just talk you through the basics of uh, the five safes. And I think it will make sense to you once we go through it. So the first principle of the five safes is safe people. Do you know who's accessing the data? Are they uh, accredited researchers? Have they gone through training? Um, I uh, come from a research background. I did research at University of Melbourne, and I did the RIOT training, which is the re research integrity training, for instance. Also, when I was accessing data at University of Melbourne, I was named on the human ethics uh, applications. So you know who's accessing the data. That's the first principle of the five safes. Um, second principle, safe projects. Is it, is it a project for the uh, benefit, you know, for the public good? Has it got uh, health uh, HREC approval? Has it been approved by a human ethics committee? So that's the idea behind a safe project. And Mike, you mentioned governance process. Has it been through your governance process? Safe settings. Uh, this is all about the compute, um, the computers, and um, they've got to, it's got to be air gapped from the internet, so you can't uh, access the internet when you're in the uh, on the virtual machine. Um, and how the computer is set up or the virtual machine is set up. Safe data. Um, I talked about this earlier. Um, this is taking steps to make sure you've made the data as safe as it can be. So you've um, removed personally identifiable information like names, dates of birth, or minimized dates of birth, and removed mobile phone numbers. So that's making the data safe to work with. Um, and finally, safe outputs. At the end of the day, you want to get your research off the machine. Um, so when you've got your aggregated research, the administrator uh, can take the data off the machine for you uh, and let you have it, and they'll inspect it and just check that there's no data breaches, that no personally identifiable information is leaving the environment. So that's the five SACE framework. So it's quite a sensible uh, framework for managing uh, data. And this is the principle behind trusted research environments. Um, so what's the ARDC doing about this? Um, well, one of the things we did last year was we gathered together a group of academics uh, with expertise in trusted research environments, uh, a couple of who are on today's agenda, um, and uh, we wrote a framework. Uh, we held some workshops as well with uh, other researchers, and we wrote a, wrote a framework on uh, what a TRE should look like, um, we did a market scan of the TREs that are available in Australia. So there's research TREs run by universities. There's also commercial offerings. We looked at those as well. So I tried to make this quite an accessible document uh, and easy to uh, make use of. So I encourage you to have a look at it if you're interested in TREs. You can find it easily with Google. Um, it's ARDC TRE framework or the uh, DO. 
DOI is listed there and you can put that in a web browser and you'll find it. Okay, the other things we're doing, um, we're setting up demonstrator environments. So we've got researchers who are uh, interested in sharing data. So we're investigating how we can do that uh, for researchers. Um, so we're investigating a, a couple of pathways for that and I'm in the midst of doing that at the moment. We're also looking at federated TREs. Uh, these are really interesting. This allows TREs to be joined together to uh, do analysis. This is uh, emerging work from the UK. The, the, uh, the guys in the UK are doing a lot of this. And the idea behind this is um, it addresses data silos and it allows you to run analysis across TREs. So you use the analysis script and it, uh, it goes to the TRE and then the results are aggregated back. So it enables you to do it across multiple TREs. And we're also looking at that as part of our advanced analytics program. We're launching a community of practice. Um, I'm cheekily calling it Unlock, because uh, uh, it can be a bit boring talking about security. So I wanted to turn that around and talk about unlocking the potential of the data by securing it. So that's why I'm calling it Unlock. Um, uh, so we'll be launching this community practice, uh, community of practice in August. And the idea is we want to build a culture around TREs. We want to talk about the technology, but it's also a cultural thing. Um, so we want to uh, get people together who are interested in TREs and want to work together. And we'll be doing that over the next two years. We'll be having vendors in to give talks about their, their TRE offerings. Uh, so I think that should be quite uh, interesting. Um, this is another thing we're doing, um, our sovereign uh, data node in Sydney. So at the moment, um, we've just established a, um, uh, a Nectar node in Sydney, in uh, a data centre in Sydney, and it's the Arnet data centre. And this data centre is a little bit special. It's got ISO 27001 security accreditation. And this is the international standard for security accreditation. And we're currently going through the process of certifying our equipment, uh, our physical equipment, and the processes we use to run it to ISO 27001. And we're working with a vendor at the moment to do that. And we hope to have that complete by the end of this year. So by the end of this year, we'll have a, a secure data center with secure Nectar infrastructure running on top of it with security accreditation. Okay, um, conclusion. Uh, TREs are fundamental. Uh, I've worked in them as a researcher, uh, and uh, they're absolutely necessary for the type of work we, we do. We're working with sensitive data. The ARDC is showing leadership here. Uh, we're using, uh, we've, we've written, and we encourage you to use the TRE framework we've written. We're setting up a community of practice, Unlock, as I said. And finally, this is a bit corny, but we're refining gold. TREs turn raw data into something more precious, secure, powerful data sets that can drive discovery. And I'll leave you with this thought. I read this book when I was a child, The Hobbit, and I always remember the cover of the book. It's the dragon sitting on a big pile of gold. Uh, in this analogy, the dragon's the TRE, and the gold is the health data. You've just got to watch out for hobbits. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much indeed. And uh, we've got a couple of minutes now for questions. So there is a roving microphone, which uh, Wendy has one of, and there may be another. So um, is there anyone, we would ask you, if you do have a question, just so people online can hear you, just wait until the mic comes. But any, are there any questions or any points anyone would like to make? Hi, I'm uh, Professor James Batchelor from the University of Southampton, and I got off the plane at 5.30 this morning, so I'm a little bit sleepy. But um, I was just wondering if you could possibly tell me, you, you talked about the NHS and the UK environment, but can you just tell me in terms of your establishing a your framework, uh, which, other international air, which other international exemplars did you look at, if, 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 and did you find any? 
Uh, that's a very good question. Southampton, I'm very fond of Southampton. I used to work in respiratory, and Southampton was one of the big centres in the UK. I'm from Newcastle originally, so... Uh, yeah, uh, no, nice to uh, nice to see you. Um, yeah, we, we very much we, we talk with the guys from the UK. It's Dare UK, um, and they've written a, a similar framework in the UK, um, and they're very much aligned with our thinking. Uh, as I say, Felix Ritchie, who set up the five safes, you know, he was a he was a, uh, a British ec uh, economist. So the thinking is very much from uh, the UK. Uh, however, they're also doing similar things in Europe um, and in the States. They've got similar systems in the States, but they don't call them TREs. Um, but in terms of alignment, it's mainly with the UK and Europe rather than uh, the States at the moment. Does that answer your question? <clears throat> Ah, uh, yeah, there's also the Data Spaces Program, which is uh, very prevalent, uh, particularly in Asia. Um, I actually do quite a lot of work with South Korea on another uh, uh, program I'm involved in, and that's the OMOP Common Data Model. So I've actually got quite uh, good links into South Korea. So, yeah, I'd, I'd welcome uh, the information. Thank you. Good question. Uh, last one. Oh, which one? <clears throat> Okay. Um, I, I was really, uh, just to clarify the point about um, no internet, so I was, just, um, I was just wondering then if there's no internet, are you saying that if you wanted to use AI in terms of the TRE, you'd have to use offline local models like the LAM CP, things like that? Uh, yes, offline local models. Um, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's, I, it, as a researcher, I used to work in an environment where I used a TRE, and it's painful. Yeah. If you want a library brought into the environment, you know, if you're using Python and you need a library, you've got to ask an admin to bring it in for you. But it's the price you pay to work with this data. And you can run large language models locally. Yeah, transformers, um, yeah, so I'm a big advocate of that approach for security reasons, yeah. Yeah, thanks for the question. Uh, thanks for your talk, Roger. Um, just wondering what the constraints are around this. Uh, are you only looking at facilitating the use of health data, or what about social data? Because of the social determinants of health, etc., it would be really great to bring in NDIS data, etc. Uh, no, it's not restricted to health data, actually. Um, my focus, I'm from the, uh, it's called the People Research Data Commons, which is health primarily, but we're also interested in social data. And I, I know that, um, you know, uh, social data is a key determinant of health data, so you can't look at this data in isolation. So, yes, we're very much aware of it shouldn't just be limited to health data. Thanks for the question. <clears throat> 